You can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> well, and we'll show you how today on The Express. On today's show. Watch. Yes, good girl. Training secrets from Langley's Dog Whisperer. She is amazing. That's why I'm here. One, two, three. Series KNS Dance Production. Oh man, you're gonna be so full. <laughs> oh yeah, I'll be back. The Re-Up Barbecue Cart Recipe for Success. Enjoy your semi-summer day. People been looking for the, the mementos of, of the royal wedding. Mary's British home in Steveston. Are you gonna be watching the royal wedding? Yes, I am. See that and more local expression. Welcome to The Express, I'm Johanna Ward at DCT Canine Services in Langley. We have all kinds of interesting stuff on today's show. Puppy kindergarten, food carts, royal wedding parties, and also a group performing to be part of what you could consider Metro Vancouver's version of So You Think You Can Dance. Up first, we head to Surrey to find out what it takes to be a dream team. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, and... Students at KNS Dance Productions are putting their best Seven foot forward. And one, two, three, four, five, six. This weekend, Seven, our kids are performing a massive variety of routines from musical theater to a massive ninja jazz routine called D Strut. Lots of acrobatics and very demanding stunts. It's all for the Dream Team Dance Festival. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Good, I'm good, good, good. Girls are very excited, very excited. Dream Team's always been a really, really ego-boosting competition. I wanted KNS to take part in the Dream Team Dance Festival as, a, as it's a competition that's great to take all ranges of dancers. <laughs> okay, go back, go back. Anything from your beginners all the way up to your senior line. Dream Team has always been a positive experience and it's good to be back this year. They've been working towards this festival for the past year. Dancers range in age from 11 to 17 years old. This year I'm doing a modern solo. And this year I'm doing a jazz solo. Maya and Ashen are intermediate dancers who first met at the studio. Dances allowed them to overcome their stage fright. It feels good to get on stage, and sometimes it's scary, but then after it feels good. I'm very excited to put them on stage because we've worked so hard and it's really fun. Senior dancers like Emily, Devin, and Raylan have grueling numbers to perform. Yes, I perform six solos from ballet and Contemporary, lyrical, jazz, musical theater. Dance is a great opportunity. It can take you a lot of places and you're gonna meet so many people and you'll know for the rest of your life. But the work is worth it. Dance teaches you great life lessons. Other youth should do this because it's another way of expressing yourself. Like it's an art and a sport. It's tough, but it's definitely, it's rewarding once you're done at the end of the day. And these petite performers impress even their biggest fans, in this case, their longtime teacher. Seeing that this is what they really love to do and that I played a hand in helping them reach a goal, whether it's just stepping on stage or singing on stage or being with their friends on stage and enjoying their time together. And in Port Coquitlam, I'm Melanie Panetta for The Express. The Dream Team Dance Festival runs from April 29th to May 1st at the Surrey Arts Centre, so you can see KNS Dance Productions and other great local troops in action. Now, you know that old saying, it's the tail that wagged the dog? Sometimes that's how dog owners feel when their pets are problematic. So today on the Express, we're at DCT Canine Services to learn some tricks from the woman who's being hailed as Langley's very own dog whisperer. Never such a thing as a bad dog, never. Yes. 
Dog obedience training is training people. It's not so much training dogs, it's training people to train their dogs. Talk to them as you go. Just because you're going slow doesn't mean you have to not talk to them. Well, I've learned that, you know, she didn't really know a lot before and she's gotten just a lot better and it's great. She's a lot better now. Does it change your relationship with her? Yeah, it does because it's easier and a little less frustrating, you know, <laughs> trying to walk her. It's easier now because she actually listens to me. Stop and sit. Yes, lovely. They're so willing and wanting to please, and the dogs love to learn, and they love to be challenged, and, and they love having the interaction with their pet parents. <laughs> so I'm going to say yes and give her a treat right away. Good girl. When we got Lula, she was 18 months old. For the first nine months of her life, she'd been tied up in a backyard. Watch. Yes, good girl. So she had no social skills, she didn't know how to play, she didn't know how to do anything, and certainly had no, no behavioral training whatsoever. All I did was go in and praise you and tell you what you're doing is the right thing. Doesn't mean the exercise is over. We found Michelle, who within a lesson, a lesson, had this girl sitting, downing, and walking to heel on a leash, but doing all of those things. Yes, good girl, off you go. It's really important with our dogs and, and with animals that we're calm. Um, always keep a smile on your face because that travels right down to the dog information wise and assertive. Good girl, Lula. Stop and sit. Yes, good girl, Lula. Good. In a gentle, kind, loving way, she gets it through their head that we are the owners, the masters. Much to the chagrin of the dogs. <laughs> Stay. Good. They know when they're, they've done something right and when they've been successful at it. And they love that, being able to share that with their pet parent. And because she has a brain and wants to use it, we come every week now with her still. <laughs> so it's not like they finished learning just because you know how to sit and walk on a leash. <laughs> it's my fans are calling. <laughs> but look at this. She's this calm little girl who is the perfect family companion. And that's Michelle. She is amazing. Yeah, that's why I'm here. You do have to adjust her position, and she does. Use your yes marker right away. It's training people. Training people and rehabilitating dogs. It's a lot of what it is. Yes, you're a very good girl. Yes, you are. At DCT Canine Services in Langley, it's truly a dog's world. And later, Michelle's going to show us one of the most common mistakes and easiest fixes in dog training. Right now, it's one of the biggest trends on the local food scene that's giving new meaning to the term fast food. We're trading in our doggy treats for a little pulled pork. It's our street vending permit. Uh, it must be displayed to the public at all times, and it gives us permission to operate our food cart here. The Reup barbecue cart can be found outside the art gallery around 11 a.m. every day. The cart is simple to run because we're basically uh, reheating and making sandwiches, so that's not a particularly complex operation. But with simplicity comes some trade-offs. Our front of house is 15 kilometers from our back of house, so there's lots of room for air in between. So if they have an equipment problem or even run out of food, they're kind of stuck. At their industrial kitchen, the Reup barbecue crew smokes about 80 pork shoulders a week for their one and only lunch item, the pulled pork sandwich. We put anything between 24 and 30 shoulders in the smoker. And they smoke for about six hours. We let them rest for an hour and then we shred away until we're done. Meanwhile, back at the cart, it's coming up to noon. I will not open that hatch until the meat is hot. So we've brought 20 bags of meat, so 20 of those packs. So we'll, we'll probably sell out today. Now we just wait. That's it. We just hope that people show up, and they will. <laughs> oh man, you're going to be so full. And boy, do they ever. Turns out Vancouverites love them some barbecue. Here we go, my friends. Great. Enjoy your semi-summer day. It's a tongue twister. Okay, so that's going to be just $7 even. Give you a bunch of napkins, you'll need them. Let me grab your chain. Oh, let's put it right side up. Mm. Oh yeah, 
I'll be back. <laughs> Good and messy. Mm-hmm. The key, especially, is certainly for us, but in the food cart industry, it's just do one thing and make sure you do it really effing well. We make sure that everything focuses on that pork. We source our pork from local farmers. We shred it ourselves to make sure everything that goes in that sandwich is good. We make the barbecue sauce by hand. Um, so everything's formulated to make sure that that sandwich is perfect. But being popular can have its challenges. They have problems with lineups. People who, who are already angry get more angry in lineups. I think being on the streets gives people a little liberty to be a little sassy. But I sass back, you know, I'll be, you know, try the sandwich, try the sandwich, and then they complain, and then they never do. And no one can argue that re-up isn't worth the wait. I'm Erin Shaw in Vancouver, Lady yeah, Express. Re-Up Barbecue is planning for what's called a mobile license over the summer. Well, it'll be kind of like an ice cream truck, except selling meat sandwiches. So you can watch for them at the beach. As for you royal watchers, we've got some fun stuff up next. This is a hot mug. After the break, I've got William, you've got Kate, and a private royal wedding celebration. I'm not even going to bed. I'm going to stay up. Plus more from DCT Canine Services. And there she is. You're watching local TV on the Express. Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by The Express is brought to you in part by Plum, fashion supplier to host Johanna Ward.